Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. As you're aware, I've been struggling with this engine. Um, you know, sad story, it's, it's possible that it's a rod knock, but I am not 100% certain now because I found videos online that um, sounds like it might be a bent valve as well. Um, all the symptoms kind of show up as a bent valve because the the idle and everything is kind of odd and and it has that really loud chattering um, valve like sound. So I'm thinking that it might be a bed valve. Um, so today I'm going to run a compression test and I'm also going to do like a simplified version of a leak down test with a, my compressor. And I'm going to determine if it is a bent valve or not by doing these two tests. Firstly, if, if I'm losing compression on one of the cylinders, um, it could signify that there's some sort of thing wrong with the engine on a certain cylinder. And then if I do a leak down test, um, it would kind of point to point me in the right direction, at least, um, where it's actually leaking from. So if, if the valves are, are leaking, then it's it likely that it is bent. Um, I'm going to also check to make sure that um, the head gasket is okay and all that kind of stuff through these tests. So um, here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull all the spark plugs. Yes, again, I've done this several times already. So um, I'm going to pull out all four spark plugs and then I'm going to disconnect the connector for my distributor so that no spark is going to be emitted uh, through my spark plug wires. I've already disconnected my spark plug wires, as you can see right there. And, and so, yeah, I've just got to disconnect the connector here for the distributor. That's disconnected. So now that all of them are, are out, we're going to put in our, our uh, compression tester. And that'll be like this bit. Here's my compression tester. Essentially, all I do is screw this in, touch the gauge, and we'll start from cylinder one and move all the way up to cylinder four. And I'll write it all down on a piece of paper. Of course, you'll see the compression readings through the video as well, but you know, it'll probably be good for me to review it because compression could be dropping while, um, during the time that I come out to check it. So, um, Probably want to crank it about five times, five to seven times. I think in the a Haynes manual says five, I mean seven times, but everyone online says to crank it five times. I've always only cranked it five times. So, well, I wouldn't move any fur further anyways if you crank it more. So I'll do seven times, make sure the battery is fully charged. I did trickle charge it, so it should be good. And I'm gonna hop into the car and and uh, crank it. Okay, so is this, can you see the reading? Okay, yeah, there you go. So that's a reading about, well, I guess 200, about there, yeah. Reading about 200, I'll jot that down, cylinder so one, 200. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's about 200. It's about 205 about there. Two oh five. And two oh five. So compression is good across the board, except it is five off on cylinder one, but that is where the valve is chattering. So, I mean, it's possible that it is a rod knock, but I uh, guess I want to check everything before I make that decision. I don't want to really pull off the oil pan gasket. All right. so. Now, I guess I'm going to do a leak down test. I mean, I could just run it with a, a wet test to, to determine if it's, if compression goes up or not, if I have put oil into this, the, the spark plug holes, but I'm not going to do that. Um, it looks like it's pretty good compression like all, throughout all the cylinders. So what I'm going to do is actually do a modified version of a, a leak down test now. So I'm going to have to get my compressor and basically I'm going to modify this tube here. Um, this is what we used for the compression test. So I'm going to pull this, this uh, stem out and then um, I'm going to obviously use this attachment, hook it up and push air directly into the cylinder um, at, when it's TDC. So to check if it's TDC, I'm just going to use a extension, pop it into here, um, and at the highest point, it will be at TDC. So I'm going to do that. And then also what I've done is I modified this because this end piece here does not hook up to any of my, my um, compressor fittings. So what I'm going to do is I hook, hook it up to a tube that I made here. So it's a two-way tube. So I'll attach the hose on there and I'm going to basically clamp this onto this end here so that it could feed air directly into the cylinder. So essentially what it'll look like is like this extended hose with a attachment piece. So I'm just going to get this all set up and set up my air compressor and I'll be right back. So let's spin this all the way around. TDC. All right, so this is the compression stroke, TDC. These, everything is pointing up. Uh, guidance are in place, I guess. So what I'm gonna do is put in the tool now and introduce air into it. So it is a TDC now, it's not really losing any pressure. Let's go to 50 PSI. 
Now basically I'm looking for where air could be leaking from. It sounds like it's looking into the intake. Yep, intake. So, for cylinder one, um, it, it sounds like air is actually leaking from the intake, and with a stethoscope, you can kind of hear a little bit of the air passing through there. So it looks like some just the intake valves are not seating properly, um, which is probably why it's clattering so much and causing that really weird um, low idle. Um, so yeah, now let's check cylinder three. That's TDC there. Okay, I'll put it 100 PSI. Yep, 10%. We'll plug 10 or 5% loss air. It's not significant. Yep, definitely leaking into the intake valves. Or intake valve. Oh, that's a lot of pressure in there. Alright, so that's TDC. This one doesn't seem to be leaking. Okay, let's test cylinder two now. And this one also seems okay. I mean, it's leaking a little bit from there, but not a lot of loss. So it seems like one 
and three have the intake loss. But then I'm hearing a lot of intake noise coming out right now, so let's take a listen. Nope, no sound coming from the intake. I mean, I can't really feel anything coming out of the exhaust, so. Hmm. These two seem to be fine. What I have noticed is my LMA seems to be always sitting downwards. I'm not sure if that's right or not. That could be the source of the chatter. <sighs> okay, well, let's pull off the valve train and take a look at it. But yeah, that's basically how you would do a leak down test. Um, I guess the valves seem kind of weird on this one and three cylinders, but the rest of them seem to be leaking, I guess, proportionately. Um, but yeah, let's let's take this apart. I mean, it, it might, the chatter might just be this. So, you know, it might have come loose somehow, but let's, Let's take a look and see. All right, so it's the moment of truth. Um, I put everything back together. I realigned up the whole valve train. Um, it was kind of off, but I'm not sure what threw that off. Um, put everything back together. I'm gonna give it a fire up right now um, and we'll see how it sounds. What do you know? The valve train is not making noise anymore. seems to be idling better as well. Yeah, it doesn't stutter anymore.
so after, I guess, lots of work, um, it seems like it finally fixed it. So what I did was I took the whole um, rocker assembly out and I did clean everything. And then I used engine oil to re-lube it and put it all back together, lined everything back up and put it into, put it back into um, the head. And, and then I readjusted all the valves. Um, and then I was like, okay, well, you know, give it a shot, fired it up. And I, guess that fixed it. it 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 seems to be running fine now um no loud knocking sound or anything um and it seems to idle a lot better too i mean of course there's still the, um the issue of like the radiator um overflow still filling up it's not filling up crazily i mean it it goes back down to the normal level when the car cools down so i'm thinking it's just the rad cap probably just replace that it's old the one that's on the car right now is old anyways so, uh, yeah, just gonna probably do that and see if that fixes that issue. I guess the other issue is like, there's a whole bunch of water that usually spits out when I fire up the vehicle. So guessing that's normal, uh, condensation. I, I, I soaked up some of the, the liquid and smelled it. Didn't smell like coolant, didn't smell like gas. Um, yeah, don't know really what it, what it is, but um, it's definitely not burning coolant. I mean, coolant's still, perfectly fine I haven't had to top it up or anything um so yeah my, I hope I hope this stays <laughs> not knocking um you know uh for for the time being I mean if 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 it doesn't um then I guess you know have to get another motor but for now I mean it looks like every everything it seems to be fine no no um issues so uh yeah I'll see you guys uh in the next video cheers